Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on the View for the Crowd YouTube channel. It feels like absolutely ages since the last time I even did a video. So it had to be pretty big to sort of make a comeback. And especially with all this COVID-19 stuff going on, it's very little sport to actually talk about. But finally, a bit of F1 news. I haven't really spoken too much about F1 on this um on this channel apart from my little rant about the Australian Grand Prix, but actually some big news coming out today that Sebastian Vettel will be leaving Ferrari at the end of the 2020 season. Now this isn't exactly like shock news, like we've all been knowing that Sebastian will leave Ferrari at some point, you know, we said that last season maybe could have been his final year with him being absolutely demolished by Charles Leclerc, however he managed to get his seat for 2020 but it looks like it's going to be no more we haven't even started the 2020 season yet and this is a big bombshell we all knew that the driver market for 2021 was going to be crazy and this is just what's going to kick it off there are so many drivers who are out of contract at the end of the season there's only a select few which aren't. I think George Russell is still contracted at Williams. Charles Leclerc's got a contract to Ferrari. Max Verstappen at um, Red Bull. And I think Lance probably has a very safe seat at, um, well, at Racing Point. Well, soon to be Aston Martin. So it really does sort of throw open what could be a very interesting driver market. And of course, the big question is, who will take over Sebastian Vettel's place at Ferrari to partner Charles Leclerc? Of course, the big two names that have been thrown out immediately are Daniel Ricciardo and Carlos Sainz. Now, these are two very talented drivers who, well, we Ricciardo has a much more proven track record than Carlos does. You know, it's interesting to pick between the two. Let's just start off with Daniel to begin with. You know, he has race wins under his belt. We know exactly how good he is in his Red Bull days. Last season at Renault, it was a bit iffy, but it wasn't purely his fault. The car was pretty dreadful, and the team itself was in a bit of a pickle. And being completely wiped the floor with by, you know, Carlos Sainz and McLaren. So it could be really interesting to see that sort of partnership between Charles Leclerc and Daniel Ricciardo. You know, Daniel is such a talented driver. And a lot of people said when he left Red Bull that his chances of a world title were over. And you could see why that would be because that Renault team were nowhere near race victories. You know, it takes a lot to sort of push into that top three. But... He's still a remarkable driver and a driver that really does deserve a shot. And I think this, if he did get the drive at Ferrari, this would be his big shot at a world title. Of course, then we go on to Carlos Sainz. He has been in Formula 1 since 2015 and he only got his first podium last season. Well, he technically finished fourth, but Hamilton got the uh, penalty. You know, so that's how he inherited his first you know, podium in Formula 1. Don't get me wrong, big McLaren fan, big fan of Carlos Sainz and what he did last season. You know, he had some remarkable drives. But is he ready for that Ferrari drive? I don't think so. I think if Ferrari bosses were really to sort of put their heads down and think about who they want out of them two, I would pick Ricardo over Sainz. Yes, Sainz is a great driver, but I think he just fits in with the ethos and what McLaren are trying to do more than he does that sort of big step up to you know, Ferrari, you know, he's been a part of the Red Bull Junior team, he never, you know, he never made it into the Red Bull car, you know, he went from Toro Rosso to Renault, and then Renault to McLaren, I don't, I don't think he would fit in with that Ferrari team, I think Charles is a much better driver, and he'd just be playing second fiddle a lot of the time, I think Daniel Ricciardo is that driver who would be able to put up a much better challenge to, um, well, to Charles, and I think he'd do a great job. Of course, those are not the only two names that are out of contract. There are so many drivers. Bottas, Hamilton are both out of contract. Will Hamilton ever really step foot in a Ferrari car? No, I think that's pretty clear, and he's already underway with contract talks with Mercedes for the next few years, so I definitely see him probably 
you know, the he's in the back end of his career now, and I think he's going to see it out with Mercedes. Um, you know, it's a good team, it's a good car, and you know they've been very successful with you know both Toto and Lewis. So I think it's pretty sure that Lewis wouldn't go to a team like Ferrari. Would Bottas fit in with Ferrari? Probably not. I don't think we're seeing the best of Bottas, and I think we could see a lot better. But I think I think his his time at Mercedes is probably drawing to a close as well. Um, it would have been good if we, you know, with all this thing, it's like it would have been great to see how George Russell got on this year or how Esteban Ocon did. I think Ocon will be staying with Renault for the, probably the time being. Um, I can't see him probably just bottling out of Renault after a season and joining Mercedes. I think Russell was probably their prime uh, driver to go into that seat. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what their future is. I could get into, like, every driver's, you know, future of what's going on. Alex Albon has also been a name that has been thrown about but you know he's literally just starting his second season of Formula 1 you know yeah he had a tremendous rookie season you know going from straight from Toro Rosso into the Red Bull team but uh, do I see him making then a leap into Ferrari no I don't think Helmut Marko would have any of that I think he's found a quite nice driver pairing of Alex Albon and Max Verstappen um people saying about Max Max is is basically his life away to um to Red Bull, so, um, well, for the time being, of course, but I don't think Helmut Marko or Christian Horner would let either of those two leave. Lando Norris, also out of contract, no, he wouldn't, he wouldn't fit in there. I think a lot, the next logical, um, driver to think of after Ricardo and signed would actually be Antonio Giovinazzi, because he's a Ferrari youngster, um, in it's not technically the Ferrari junior team, but the Ferrari customer team of Alfa Romeo. Could he make that step up into Ferrari, an Italian in the Italian team? I guess time would tell, but would he then... Has he really shown enough to be in Re in Ferrari? No, as he definitely needs another year under his belt before even thinking about getting picked up by a top team. Um, he didn't really prove too much in his first year either, so I don't think Ferrari would um, do that. Charles in his first season had already done a lot better than what Antonio did. Yeah, the the Salvo in twenty yeah in twenty eighteen was a lot better than the twenty nineteen Alfa Romeo, but I don't I couldn't see it happening. So it really does that boil down to Signs and Ricardo. Now the question is, would Sebastian Vettel retire? I don't think so, but it wouldn't surprise me if he decided to retire after this season. You know, he's not really got that much to prove anymore. Um, you know, he's a four-time world champion. He had his shots at Ferrari, but he wasn't going to do it. Um, would it suit him to go and you know take Kimi's seat at Alfa Romeo? Probably not. I don't think Vettel wants that sort of end to his career. I can't see him being one of these people who wants to then sort of just dip down into a smaller team to finish out his career. If, if he does it, fair enough, but I don't see him doing it, and I think he would probably um, retire at the end of the 2020 season. A lot of people have said if Sainz does leave McLaren, then you could see Sebastian Vettel going to McLaren. Could be interesting, that, but I again, I don't personally see it. There are so many options, so many options that are open to him. I don't think he will make a decision just yet. I think you'll see what drive options are open to him. Because if, personally speaking, if Sainz was to go to Ferrari, I think they'd probably get Nicholas Latifi um, to join Lando Norris just because Latifi's dad has stakes in McLaren. But I think he has shares in McLaren, actually. Um, so... <laughs> The politics of Formula One might land him a McLaren drive, even though he was actually never picked up by the um, McLaren driver program, which I, I I did find particularly interesting. But yeah, it was it's going to be interesting to see what happens, what's going to happen in this next sort of few months, because just like when Ricardo decided to leave Red Bull and go to Renault, he completely threw open the the driver market, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. 
I think we're going to see a lot of shopping changing, and it's going to be interesting to see what the 2021 grid looks like. I hope it's not just going to be a case of <laughs> all the all the drivers just stay there where they are, because if Haas keep hold of Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen for another year, I don't <laughs> don't know what Gunter and Gene are thinking if they're going to try and keep those two as a driver pairing, because they are just a disaster waiting to happen. So guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, leave your thoughts down in the comments below. If you did like this video, make sure to leave a like. And to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure to follow my blog. I know it's sort of been lacking recently, but with the lack of sport, there's no real sport to write about. I'm sure, hopefully, once all my uni assignments are over, I'll be able to finally sort of put out some more regular content out on there. So, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Ben Edwards. Good. Bye.